Hello YouTube. Today we're going to do something a little bit different on uh, this channel. We're going to install Linux on this PowerBook G4. This is a 2004 model equipped with 2 gigs of RAM, 1.33 gigahertz PowerPC G4 CPU, Airport Extreme, um, Radio 9700 mobile graphics, pretty much just your standard 15 inch model from 2004. What it was, I went to the Mint PPC website, that is www.mintppc.org, and downloaded the G4 and G3 image of Mint PPC version 11. This is quite an old version from 2011. But uh, yeah, so today we're just going to uh, go through the steps of setting it up on your particular Mac. So I already inserted the CD to figure out if it was bootable or not, and it is. So let's just start by holding down the C key while pressing the power button. This will force the open firmware to redirect to the CD drive to boot from it. So let's see what happens. Okay. Now we are at the boot prompt. Here we are going to type the URL, which we will need. Let me just focus here real quick. There we go. Let's see if I can. Got some really bad focus issues here. Okay, there we go. That's much better. What we're going to type is install space URL equals mint PPC dot org. This will load the files from the mint PPC website. So note before you are going to hit the enter key, make sure you have an Ethernet cable plugged into your Mac. Let's hit enter. Because without Ethernet, you cannot load the uh, required files. So it's going to be a nightmare. At first, I was going to put OpenSUSE on here. But uh, yeah, I, init I initialized the uh, DD transfer uh, somewhere halfway the afternoon. And it's now almost 8.30 in the, e in the evening. And it still hasn't completed yet. It's still going, just at 190k per second. So now we're going to pick a, a language. Let's just pick English here. Um, no, I'm not in the United States. So let's go to Europe. Netherlands. Hit enter. Right, we can't choose anything here. So we'll just go United States. Key map to use. Um, yeah, American English. I have an American keyboard. So that should work. See, now it's going to check for the Ethernet interface. It's going to give us an IP address. IPv6 won't yield any results for it, but because we just have a basic IPv4 setup. Right, so now we can choose the host name. It is not Debian. I'm going to call it PowerBook G4. I only have one, so that should do. We do not have a domain here. So we're going to skip that. Uh, let's see. Now we can choose the Debian mirror from where we are going to download the installation files. In my case, I'm going to use the Netherlands mirror because it is known to be quite good. And I'm going to pick ftp.nl.debian.org. We do not have a proxy, so I'm going to hit tab, go to the continue button, hit enter. And now we are going to wait for it to retrieve the operating system. So far, so good. The speed of the installation may vary. My particular PowerBook G4 15 inch has an IDE to MSATA converter, so it's basically an SSD that I have installed in here. So it's a little bit quicker than uh, a regular IDE hard drive would be. It's definitely a cheaper solution. Pretty much I would recommend anyone who runs an old Mac like this 
and if you really want to use it or you know keep it in good condition and keep it working then uh, just get an MSATA SSD they're, I mean they're pretty cheap the adapters aren't uh, very expensive either so it should be fine password just a random password uh, let's see I'm just gonna use my first name that's gonna be my username as well uh, password yeah well just something random that I can remember there we go whoops that's what happens when you type randomly alright it's gonna detect hardware retrieving partition manager so we're probably going to set up the uh, partitions on this thing soon Yeah, let's see here. Uh, guided, use the largest continuous free space. We're going to go guided and use the entire disk. I do not intend to uh, do a manual partition setup here. If you want to go manual, you could do that. And then you can specify which disk to modify in order to, uh, for instance, make a dual boot between OS X and, uh, and Linux. I'm not going to do that, my SSD is only 64 gigs. So I'm going to go for guided use entire disk. In my case it's called a light on SMS 64, that's my SSD. Um, yeah, we're not going to separate the home partitions here. We're just going to leave this at the typical setup, which would just mean that your home directory is not on a separate drive you would want a home directory on a separate drive if you want to for instance migrate your operating system or whatever you want to do with your files if you just want them on a separate partition in order to modify all other kinds of partitions so you can install different operating system or in this case different Linux distributions and still keep your files in your home directory in the same location you will not have to migrate those you can just say or just point the installer to hey there's my home directory there are all my files you can just install the operating system around it. Very convenient if you uh, swap operating systems a lot, especially if they're Linux. On a Mac, I would not necessarily see why you would want to do that, but if you want to dual boot, maybe just try Mint PPC, maybe try OpenSUSE, maybe try Ubuntu, whatever floats your boat. We're going to use all files in one partition and hit enter. Right, so our final setup looks like this. We have one 32K uh, partition that's called Apple, so that's probably the uh, EFI partition. One megabyte for boot, that's probably where Grub is stored. 61 gigs of storage for, well, that's the file system, it's the XT4. That's the root of your hard drive. And we have some swap space. In this case, this machine has two gigs of RAM, so we'll probably not need a lot of that. We're going to hit finish partitioning and write changes to disk and hit enter. There we go. Now we are going to write the changes to disks, hit enter again, and then the setup will continue. Now we'll format a drive. Your OS X will now be removed if you're going to go full Linux on your Mac. If you, uh, of course, modify the partitions just to have one extra Linux partition, or well, two, one for swap and one for storage. Then, of course, uh, it will only format that particular partition. So now it's going to download all of the necessary files. In my case, I'm using a 50 megabit optic fiber connection. Nothing special, nothing exceptional. Works, does the job. And it's connected through Ethernet, which is a full gigabit across my entire network, which is nice. But uh, yeah, it's still limited to my outside connection, which is 50 megabit. So this shouldn't take too long. 
But nevertheless, I will uh, stop the video here and come back once this phase is over or something changes. All right, we're nearing the end of uh, phase one. We're almost through, 98%. And now we're going for the reboot. No, we're not, okay. It's configuring the aptitude package manager, which is required to uh, update and install packages on your Linux operating system from the command line. There will of course also be some kind of software center, I, uh, I reckon, to uh, get some apps from. But uh, the old-fashioned and professional way is to do from the command line, that's where apt comes in, or aptitude. So we're just going to let this run, I think. We're almost done already, okay, cool. You never know what to expect, so... Just gonna let her run. Apparently, this version uses a, a Linux kernel version 3.2 already. Well, that's actually not bad. That's that's a lot safer than uh, running OS and uh, Tiger or Leopard. I think. I think this core is much more secure, actually. So that would be cool. At least it's not a kernel 2.6. Seems to me it's just going to install some software here. I will uh, stop the camera again and we'll be back once something actually happens. Alright, it just configured the bootloader and now we are finishing the installation. And after this we should be greeted with a reboot cycle and uh, yeah, a mint desktop, I presume. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. I'm just gonna continue. Not sure what that was about. Hmm. I don't think we can remove the CD just yet, but we'll see. Okay, we're going to reboot now. I'm going to keep the mouse button pressed in order to release the disk as soon as it will give us the opportunity to do so. Because there is no way to eject the disk drive from a Mac and set up there. Should come out now. There we go. We're going to, let's see, yep. We're just gonna hit enter there. Just reinitialize the DVD drive. <laughs> wow. Those fans really ramped up. Anyway. At least we now know the power management is working. Now we are logging on. That was actually pretty quick. All right. Yeah, it does feel reasonably warm there, so I guess it makes sense for it to heat up a little bit. Not sure how I feel about this desktop environment though, but at least we've got uh, the operating system up and running. Let's see here. Yep, Wi-Fi is working as well. 
I did see the B43 firmware coming along for the Broadcom wireless chip. So that's good. So we've got wired and wireless working. Bluetooth is working, judging from the big Bluetooth icon here. Yep, it is. Not sure if sound works though. Let's see here. References. Nope. Actually, not quite sure where I could determine that, but you know what? Let's just go to sign a video. Okay, we have VLC built in. That's very nice. Music player. Bracero for burning. But uh, yeah, at least we got Mint up and running. So that's good. Let's see, the browser on this is Ice Weasel, apparently. So let's open that up. Apparently this is based on Linux Kacha. Okay. Let's go to YouTube. Well, let's hit the music button. See what kind of horrible music it will come up with. No, oh dear. <laughs> That's some real terrible stuff, but yeah. It's been a little bitch here. <laughs> this is all new music. I don't care for that at all. Uh, let's see. Mm, that's more like it. Let's see if this actually plays. Don't know uh, what's up here. Can't tell why sound isn't working though, but maybe that's just a slight bug. I don't know. Nope, does not seem that we have audio. Maybe it's set to the wrong device, but anyway. At least Linux Mint is up and running on the PowerBook G4, and that's what this video was all about. So hope you all enjoyed this video. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.